So these are the things that I do on a regular basis to make sure that my NAS is running the best all the time. Hey, how you doing? It's Emilio here. We are talking NAS, network attached storages and how to keep those things running well. You know, your computer, over time is gonna to start to run poor. Same is true on your NAS. And you wanna make sure that that thing is running well, optimally as often and as much as it can. Uh, especially if you're running this in a environment that a lot of people need access to that NAS. You've got files, you've got applications that have been accessed. How do you keep the thing running well? I love the NAS and we've got lots of videos talking about NAS topics. So click on that bell so you don't miss out on any of our video releases. And also one more thing, you wanna know more about NAS and become a pro at managing NAS. I've got actually four training courses, training courses on how to become better professionals at managing those things and how to become an expert. So you can go check those out. I've got links to them in this video description. Every NAS is built differently. Every NAS is gonna have different specs inside of it. Every NAS is gonna run a different version of the operating system. But some of these tips will work across all of these NASs. Either throw in reminders for myself in my calendar just to remember to do these. And some of this stuff I can also go and schedule myself, which is really, really cool. But I recommend doing this quite regularly to make sure that the thing is running as best as it can all the time. Now inside of your NAS, you've got all of the bits. You've got the main bit, which is of course all of the hard drives. You've got combinations of hard drives. Maybe you've got SATA disks, you've got flash disks, you've got NVMe disks, you've got all these different configurations of disks. And you've also got CPU, RAM, there's a motherboard, there's all of those bits. The same as on your computer. Your computer has a limited amount of CPU resource available to it, a limited amount of memory resource around it. So you've got to think about how much is that stuff being utilized by your NAS? And this is why it's very important to be checking the activity monitor, the activity logs. Every NAS is gonna have it slightly in a different area, but there should be a spot on your NAS when you can actually see the activity that is being performed on your NAS and how much of your CPU, memory, network resource is being used. If you're seeing that thing up high and it's like hitting your CPU really, really high all the time, well, hopefully you now have a little bit of a visibility around what applications are actually using that amount of resource. And those are the applications which could be the cause that is causing your NAS to run poorly. So this is where you can decide to shut down those apps uninstall those apps, maybe look at apps that are sort of similar and reassess, right? So in my NAS, I've got some widgets right here on my desktop. So I can see scheduled tasks that I've got running. I can see my overall system health, resource monitoring. I'm using these as notifications. And there's also a bunch of notifications that happen behind the scenes. You can also go and look at backend logs to make sure that logs are performing okay. And I recommend going in, especially if you're having trouble on your NAS, you wanna make sure things are running well, go into the log section to see what is happening over there. I've also got a notification section here around emails. I can enable that. That, making sure that I'm connecting it to a right external or internal email provider. And then I'm gonna be sent notification emails to make sure that I'm actioning responsively as things come out. Next, how are my disks performing? How is my storage overall performing? My storage pools, my RAID configurations, these have all gotta be considerations when making sure that your NAS continues to run well. Do your disks have any errors? Are your disks reporting bad sectors? Is your disk clicking, right? You may hear it sometimes where the disks, if they're the, the sort of disks that have like a little um, needle inside of old school disks that spin up and down and there's clicking sounds and they could be skipping. If you're running SATA, if you're running SSDs, then of course you don't have the disk sound, but they can still start performing a little bit poorly and then they can sometimes just die on you, but they also can have some faults. There's lots of disk health applications that are built into your NAS, so check that up. And also how is the storage health itself? Are there tools built in to your NAS storage section allowing you to run disk health checks, storage pull checks, where you can actually check the integrity of your storage. So making sure that everything looks green over here, we're gonna make sure that we've got healthy ticks, we've got healthy ticks against our volumes. Within our storage sections, you've got a few storage pools, making sure that everything looks good along with any SSD cache or cache that you have got also. You've then got summaries here around your hard drive, seeing that all the hard drives are green, my cached SSDs are green, and you can also then go and perform specific tests against each of these. You can actually go and click on health info to see a 
little bit more about the actual hard drive, how it's performing, has there been any bad sectors, the temperature, etc. Also going in running some smart tests would be very, very important. So if you have the option to do a quick test, an extended test, making sure that they come out as healthy, will make sure that your disks are running as best as they can. So go into these sections. If you do have an opportunity within the app center, in the app stores of your NAS to go and get any disk storage pool check, checkers, health checks, go and do that as well. So here's the deal. I use my NAS quite regularly, like almost on a daily basis, I'm logging into my NAS. Well, let me rephrase. On a daily basis, I'm actually accessing my NAS's data. Right, so on my computer, I've got all the shares, my NFS or my SMB shares, and I'm accessing it that way. Not as often, maybe once every week, once every two weeks, I'm actually logging into my NAS as the interface to have a look in there. And uh, you can just get boggled down with busyness where you just don't have the time to go in and check up on all of the system health. So there's two parter to this point. One is actually go and set up some processes for yourself to go and check up on all of the system health. How is the overall thing performing? Most of the modern NASs should be letting you know if there are errors being reporting in different sorts of areas. But what you can also do is you can actually make it easier for yourself if you set up email notifications where the NAS actually sends you notifications of faults, of bugs, of weird things that are going on, of disk space issues, of bad sectors on disks. That way you can go in to your NAS and fix it based on an alert that has been set up for you correctly. So in my NAS, I've got some widgets right here on my desktop. So I can see scheduled tasks that I've got running. I can see my overall system health, resource monitoring. I'm using these as notifications. And there's also a bunch of notifications that happen behind the scenes. You can also go and look at backend logs to make sure that logs are performing okay. And I recommend going in, especially if you're having trouble on your NAS, you wanna make sure things are running well, go into the log section to see what is happening over there. I've also got a notification section here around emails. I can enable that, making sure that I'm connecting it to a right external or internal email provider. And then I'm gonna be sent notification emails to make sure that I'm actioning responsively as things come out. Over time, whatever the brand is of NAS that you've got, they're gonna be releasing updates. And often people are a little bit hesitant to update because of two things. They go, well, one, if my NAS is running fine, why do I need to update it? And two, well, if I update it, it's gonna to start to run slower. And that can be true, but there's also a third. The third is, well, maybe you think your NAS is running well, but it could be running better. Or there's a vulnerability, a bug that has been found on your NAS that this update addresses, okay? So what I'm gonna recommend is uh, have a look at keeping your NAS up to date as often as you can, but it's a little bit more than that. When your brand of NAS release an update, go and check out the little, uh, you know, the little spiel where it gives you a little bit of a summary of what this upgrade is actually doing. Because some of the, sometimes it will actually show you that it's gonna be you know, doing some performance improvements, visual improvements to maybe some of the GUI, the graphical user interface to make things run a little bit smoother. If there are vulnerabilities, hey, you gotta fix those vulnerabilities. The last thing that you want is for your NAS to be open to an external attack by the bad people. You don't want that. So you wanna fix that up as soon as possible. So check out your updates because often the update is going to actually make your NAS sometimes perform better, but often just to be a little bit more secure and safe. And of course, yeah, the NAS sometimes does come with all of these new additional features, which is really, really cool. So this is not only true of my operating system, of my NAS, but also of my applications. I'm gonna to wanna to go and check out the updates that are available for my apps. If you've got the option to automatically update your applications, and that's actually true of your operating system. Don't tick a little button if you've got a little tick or something uh, to automatically update your NAS. I probably don't recommend doing that. Go and check it out manually because you wanna make sure that what you're installing is not gonna make things worse. Because sometimes when you upgrade things, you can't actually downgrade and go back. So make sure that you know what the update is gonna be doing. But sometimes for your application updates, there's actually improvements to those applications because the developers, the coders, the programmers behind the scenes are busy coding, releasing new stuff ways to work better, better efficiencies for those applications. So you may actually get better performance out of those apps by actually updating them. Now this one may not necessarily make your NAS run better or healthier, but it's super important that you have backups in place in the event that your NAS does start to run poor, 
and you may lose data by accident because something happens, a disk fails, your storage pool collapses, and we don't want that. So backups, backups, backups. You know the amount of times, like seriously, the amount of times that I've had people in companies reach out to me and go, hey, uh, can you get this data back for me? I accidentally deleted the data. You know what I asked them? Do you have backups? And they go, nah, can't do it, sorry. And then they go go away crying. We wanna be making sure that we've got backups in place. Uh, backups are like super important. It's like insurance, right? You get insurance for, for like a car, you know, the chances of you having an accident may be slow unless you're an absolute hoon, but often you just need it just in case, in case somebody smacks into you or in case you are driving like a doofus to ensure that in case data is accidentally deleted, purposefully deleted, or deleted because of disks failing and corruption of data. Make the backups happen automatically. Set a schedule, chuck in an external hard drive, back it up to the cloud, back it up to another NAS, whatever your backup thing is, there's lots of backup options available on lots of NASs. Make sure that you are actively backing up your NAS frequently. Test your backup recoveries as well. And then I think the most important one, the most important one is um, the world of cybersecurity. You know, you knew this one was coming, right? Cybersecurity is like the thing. Every day you're hearing of stuff on the ne on the news of cyber attacks, of things happening. And a lot of these cyber attacks are happening where they steal a whole bunch of data, data leaks. A lot of this data, you know where it's, a lot of this data sits? It sits on storage devices, NAS and SAN devices. That's where the data sits. And so uh, somebody managed to get in to a NAS or to a SAN, either logging into it directly or via a SMB share that was poorly secured, you know, or a VM that had a disk mounted that was poorly secured, or the NAS was exposed out to the internet and probably shouldn't have been. Have a good password, have MFA built in. Do you need your NAS exposed out to the internet? Like I know it's convenient, right? It's convenient to be able to be anywhere and be able to access your NAS, but because your NAS is now exposed to the internet, the whole world could potentially see it if it's not set up correctly or it's poorly set up. So maybe lock that down if you don't actually need it exposed. Uh, do you have things like SSH maybe turned off? Turn FTP off. Turn all of these protocols off that you don't actually need. Limit the amount of people that can access your NAS because this is the thing that I see a lot is that NAS is just, hello, I'm fully open to my whole network. Uh, only allow the people into your NAS that actually need access. And if you do have a whole pool of people that need access, make sure they've got proper permissions in place so that they can only access the data that is relevant to them. Most NAS have got firewalls built into them. Go and configure your firewall properly. Go and download some security software from the App Store. If your, mat, if your NAS has an App Store, go and download proper security software for it. Intrusion detection software, malware, antivirus, endpoint protection software running directly on your NAS. Keep the thing as secure as possible. And then you've got to think about physical security. Like think about physically where your NAS is because this is something that people don't think about. They go, oh yeah, it's secure on the network. But what about physically? Is it actually locked inside of a cabinet or locked somewhere or do you only have access to it? Is the USB port closed off? Like can anybody just grab a USB stick and just plug something into it and then introduce something into your NAS? Some of this stuff will work for you. Some of it may not. As you're continuing to upgrade the software, it's eventually going to need to get a bit of a boost, a bit of an upgrade, right? So just as long as you're aware of that one. Subscribe, click on the button on the bell. We release videos on all things tech, including storage. Check out my training courses as I said at the start on all things storage as well. And we'll see you on the next video.